So this is just to describe the process that MIPS uses to do floating point math. What they have is what we call a coprocessor, which is a separate um, ALU, a separate data path, a separate set of registers uh, that you can transfer information back and forth from the regular unit, the regular CPU we built, into the floating point CPU or coprocessor, and then back and forth again. So the regular CPU does most of the regular work. The floating point coprocessor just does floating point math. And so it has specialized hardware, specialized registers, and then if you want to sort of take it a step further, you could unify the memory all together, instruction and data memory all in one place, and also both of these accessible um, via the execution and integer unit and the floating point unit. This is starting to get into higher level of architecture that you'll learn in 301, uh, but basically you have specialized slices of hardware for specific tasks now. One for executing like branches and jumps and loads and stores and ALU operations that are an integer type, and then a separate one for floating point values. So in MIPS, the way this happens is there are 32 additional floating point registers. These are called F registers, from F0 to F31. And because floating point numbers can rep be represented as single precision or double precision, these registers are allocated in pairs. And you can either look at each individual register separately, or you can look at the pairs of double precision registers from an even to the subsequent odd. So F0 and 1 are a pair for double precision. F2 and 3 are a pair, etc. Uh, you also have instructions that allow you to move information back and forth from one unit to the next unit. Uh, and the important thing is that that doesn't actually transfer, this doesn't change the value, right? A 32-bit integer is just presented in 32 bits to the floating point unit, which will then interpret it as if it were a floating point number. So you have to be very careful uh, understanding the type of data that you're dealing with. If you load a number from memory, which is a, supposed to be a floating point number, and you treat it like an integer, it's going to look weird and vice versa. So this is a really important to understand, that we're not actually doing a conversion, we're just moving stuff back and forth. <clears throat> uh, most of the floating point operations in MIPS are analogous to integer operations, and you specify them by saying single precision or double precision. So if we have an add, we would have add or R type add, classic R type add into destination register to source registers, a floating point add at single precision is add.s. <clears throat> and then that's into a floating point destination, a floating point source, and a floating point source. And then a floating point double precision add looks exactly the same, but fd, fs, and ft have to be even so that they can use the even register and the subsequent odd register. So that's what the .s and the .d um, instructions in MIPS are all about. And these are also on your sheet, just in case you want to play around with them. <clears throat> there are two new, um, where's my sheet here? There are two new uh, instruction formats, which probably you've seen on your sheet, um, which look very similar to regular integer instruction formats. The important thing to recognize is that in floating point instruction format, you don't have the shift amount. You have to extend. So again, same as before, the opcode has to be the same. Uh, and so you can't, you, you can't specify the rest of the instruction until you have the opcode. And floating point opcodes have to be extended twice. We extend it with an opcode extension that used to be where RS is and a function extension, which is the regular function extension as it was before. So a floating point instruction has 6, 12, 17 bits of uh, that indicate the opcode uh, using or indicate the functionality with opcode, floating point extension, and function extension. And then FD, FT and S are the same. Um, <clears throat> sorry, T is the same. S is here, D is here. So geez, be careful about this. Uh, for floating point operations, it may look a little different. And for floating point immediate operations, it's even worse. You specify one register and one immediate value, and the extension is here. So be aware of that when you're looking at floating point um, operations. Uh, they're, again, this is what I just said. They're further extended from the base op code by what we call the, the uh, EX field. This MT, it should be EX as opposed to FMT, but same idea. 
so the op code for for floating point numbers is just one one in hex, which is zero one zero 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 one. That's the six bits that indicate a floating point op code. And then I think this is also on your sheet. We can have a quick look here. Um, the floating point op codes are here. Uh, yeah, so the floating point op codes look like this. We've got 010001, and then the EX fields say whether we're uh, single precision or double precision. It's an awful lot of bits to represent one piece of information, but there you go. And then the function field tells us what the, whether we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, <clears throat> and that's what we're doing. Uh, so yeah, the function field indicates what we're actually doing, and then the extension field indicates whether we're using single precision or double precision. Uh, there are no floating point shifts. Doesn't make any sense to do a floating point shift. Uh, and so there's no shift amount there. Uh, there you go. So this is what they look like in the in the instruction field itself. As an example, uh, add.s, single precision add uh, into register F0, uh, the value that's in register F8 and the value that's in register F10. And it looks like an ALU operation. And it acts like an ALU operation, but it operates on the coprocessor rather than the regular processor. So the ALU doesn't do anything, the coprocessor is instructed to do a thing, and then the result is stored in a coprocessor register. So in order to actually do that, you have to move information back and forth from the regular registers to the coprocessor registers, allow the coprocessor to do its thing, and then move the results back. So even though uh, the floating point operations are long and complicated and they take a lot of work, it's even worse than that because you have to move the information first and then move it back again. Uh, and this is how we actually move. We've got a uh, instruction called uh, LWC1, which is loading from memory into coprocessor one. C1 is coprocessor one, expecting that there would be more, but in fact, there's usually not more. Usually it's only just a floating point coprocessor. So LWC1 is a load word into a coprocessor register and you specify a floating point register RF, but the address is still in the regular register RS. So the, the coprocessor doesn't have addresses, doesn't have access to data memory or anything like that, but you can load into that coprocessor using an instruction executed on the regular side, on the execute side, using a register on the execute side, uh, and then the, the target register is on the floating point coprocessor side. So the, again, the base register is a standard CPU register, and the destination register is a floating point register, and you can load double into coprocessor one as well. And you can store word into coprocessor one, and you can store double into coprocessor one. And you can convert <laughs> back and forth uh, from integer to floating point format. This is another functionality that you have to build into the hardware because it's not based on, it's not, it's not sort of built in. So you have to design it yourself. Uh, so CVT is the instruction. CVT, uh, and then you indicate what your, what your target is. Convert into single precision format from an integer stored in a word somewhere and you have a destination register and a source register. So you can move information as an integer into the coprocessor. On the coprocessor, you can convert it into a floating point number, and then you can manipulate it, right? CVTSD is from to a single precision floating point from a double precision integer. Or you can do it, or sorry, from a single precision, um, single precision floating point from a double precision floating point, right? This is... Uh, a, an integer, the regular integer, and this is from a double precision to a single precision, from a single precision to a double precision, you can convert these formats around inside the machine. Most of the time you won't need to, but this functionality is available. You can also move information at a single precision or a double precision method, uh, and that just means take, the, take a copy from one register, put it into another register, and you can move back and forth between um, floating point registers and regular registers with MF, move from coprocessor one, and MT, move to coprocessor one. And that allows you to copy uh, data from a floating point register to a CPU register or from a CPU register to a coprocessor register. Uh, and so this is what some of these things look like. And again, I'll let you sort of look this stuff up on your own. 
Um, mostly we're just letting you know that these exist. You may find it useful in the assignment that's, uh, that you're having to sort using uh, double precision words. Uh, you might decide to do it in floating point. You might decide to do it in some other format. You might decide not to do it at all. I might make it a, a bonus. We'll see. Uh, anyway, so there are floating point, uh, R format floating point instructions. Uh, there are I format floating point instructions. And you can see the, um, the, the extensions that are stored here, the opcode extensions that are stored here, uh, and like that. So this is the, um, yeah, this is the move from coprocessor one. This one is sort of a mixed floating point or instruction because some of the registers are specified as CPU registers and some of the registers are specified as floating point registers. And so this one's sort of a, a, um, a hybrid format, but it, our format and F, our format are pretty similar anyway, so that's not the end of the world. There are floating point branches and compares, but we're not gonna worry too much about those. It's branch on coprocessor one, true. So there's a flag that gets set in the coprocessor if uh, two numbers are compared. Compare for equality in single precision. Compare for less than in single precision. Compare for less than or equal to on single precision or double precision for each of those. And again, you can do that, but we're not gonna spend too much time on that. I just wanna let you know that it exists and is available um, and then carry on. And here's a good question for an exam. C.eq, compare for equality of floating point numbers, exists as an instruction, but we shouldn't use it. Why? Because it's possible to get two numbers that are close enough to being equal to our purposes, but not being exactly equal as floating point numbers, and so we should compare for the difference to be less than some epsilon. That's our target. <clears throat> And again, a few more formats and stuff like that. So that's just a general overview of the kind of things that MIPS implements for floating point numbers. Stick with integers most of the time <laughs> would be my general advice.